How is everyone? Good? Good. Yeah? You seem lively, you seem happy, everyone's happy. I am, I'm a bit sad, I, I'm from Australia, I've been here for a few weeks and I really... Are you guys from Australia? Why are you with, what are you doing with a group of... Where are you from, whereabouts are you from? Brisbane. Ah, uh, Brizzy. That's not, I mean, there's Australia and then there's Brisbane. But, um, anyway, I, I, I really miss my dog. I've, I've got a dog back home and I really miss her. I, I love, does that, like, dog owners make some noise? There'll be some dog owners, surely. Like four. Um, so no one's going to appreciate this joke at all, but I'll do it anyway. Um, my dog, I really miss her and, I, like, the thing I miss about having like having my dog around is walking her to the park. I think walking my dog to the park, whenever I'm anxious or stressed, it's the best thing for me to do. I reckon that it's my favourite thing in the world to do as long as I don't have to speak to any other humans when I do it. Because I think nothing illustrates the awkwardness that human consciousness has created better than the difference between dog to dog interaction and human to human interaction. Because the dogs, they connect straight away. You're a dog, I'm a dog, let's fucking wrestle. <laughs> While the humans simultaneously think to themselves, fuck, now I'm going to have to talk to this dickhead. <laughs> you walk over and your dogs are wrestling, so you walk over and you have the dog conversation. And no one enjoys the dog conversation because it's the exact same every time you have it. You start off by asking each other how old your dogs are. And people are really specific about that. Four years and seven months. Which I think is odd because, like, what's the difference between a four-year-old dog and an eight-year-old dog? Like, dogs only have three ages. Puppy, not a puppy, gonna die soon, probably. Like, that's all there is. <laughs> And then you move on, you ask each other what breed of dogs you have. At this point, people will often tell you that their dogs are shelter dogs. I'll just throw that in there. I don't care, mate. That's irrelevant. I've given to charity before. Like, I'm a good person too. <laughs> and then you move on to the comment phase of the conversation. So one of you makes a comment about how cute and funny the dogs look while they're wrestling. The other one follows that up with a comment about how tired all the wrestling's going to make them, but how that's a good thing because it means they'll be less mischievous when they get home. Just like kids. Yeah. <laughs> you say just like kids? <laughs> kids are a lot like dogs. Um, but then you've, you've reached the end of the dog conversation at that point. That's all there is to it. And you both know that's the end of the conversation, but your dogs are still wrestling. I just hate that awkward tension. You've got nothing else to talk about. You're just standing there awkwardly. I always try and escape. There's basically two established options in society for how you can escape the dog conversation. Option one, you make a random comment about how you've got to put dinner on it, even though it's two in the afternoon. <laughs> Get out of there. Option two is a bit more abstract. Option two, you like stare at the dogs and pretend that you're so entertained by the way that they're wrestling <laughs> that you don't need to talk anymore. That's the most works. But I wish there was a third option. I want there to be an option three. So next time you walk your dog, next time you have the dog conversation, incorporate option three. Option three at the end of the dog conversation is to talk about something in your life that really matters to you that has nothing to do with the dogs. <laughs> that could revolutionise the way we connect as humans. Eh? Imagine that. It gets the, so they walk over, hey mate, hey guy, yeah, good. How old's your dog? Six years. Oh, nice. How old's yours? Three years and four months. Oh, that's pretty specific. What is it? Does it have a bit of German Shepherd in it? Or is it, yeah, it's a German Shepherd cross Kelpie, so good mix, lots of energy. What about you? Is that just a Labrador? Just sort of a, yeah, yeah, just a normal Labrador, plain and boring. Shelter dog, though, great dog too. Much. They get along well, don't they? How cute and funny do they look the way they're wrestling like that? Absolutely, mate. They're having a great time. And you know what? This is good for us as well. Because the more she does this here, the less she'll be tearing up my garden when we get home. You're not wrong, mate. You're not wrong. I just found out my girlfriend's been having sex with one of my university professors. Uh, that's brutal, man. Um, I, I, like, I feel bad. I, I've got to put dinner on, though, so I'm going to let... Um, in Australia, you know from Brisbane, there's lots of um, slang terms, there's lots of colloquialisms in the language. I moved, 
I lived in Adelaide, I moved to Melbourne recently, and there's heaps of differences in the language. There's a few things that are different between Adelaide and Melbourne. The language is one. Also, the one that I've noticed most is the marijuana quality is sufficiently better in Adelaide. Melbourne's <laughs> marijuana quality is terrible. I've, I've moved there and, thank you bro, I'm struggling with it. Like, I've, I've, I find that Melbourne weed makes me overthink everything. Adelaide weed, I'm relaxed, but Melbourne weed, I'll give you an example of a conversation I had when I first moved to Melbourne, when I was smoking Melbourne weed, compared to a conversation I had with Adelaide weed. So Adelaide weed, Adelaide weed's chilled. Adelaide weed, we're sitting there, an ad comes on for condoms, and I'm like to my friend from Melbourne, oh, condoms, that's funny, isn't it? They're showing an ad for frangers. And my friend's like, what did you call them? Frangers. And I'm like, yeah, what do you call them here? And he's like, we call them dingers. And then we laughed for about five minutes. That's Adelaide weed. <laughs> Melbourne weed, a couple weeks later, similar thing, we're sitting there, the TV's on, an ad comes on for beer, and I'm like to my friend, oh, that's funny, isn't it? They're showing an ad for schooners. And my friend's like, what did you call them? Schooners. And I'm like, yeah, what do you call them? He's like, we call them pots. And I'm like, that's weird, you call them pots, like pot. That's like pot, that's like what we just smoked. We just smoked pot just then. Should we have smoked pot just then? I don't know if I should have smoked pot just then. I've actually got stuff to do. I've got a uni assignment during a few days. I'm meant to be writing this essay about capitalism and whether the nature of capitalism makes us feel isolated and depressed as people. And you know what? I'm scared to write that assignment because I think maybe it does make us feel like that. And then I think maybe I just feel like that at the moment because I'm new to Melbourne. I don't have as many friends here. I miss my mum. I miss my ex-girlfriend. I'm watching too much porn. I'm worried about how much porn I'm watching. I'm worried I'm going to start subconsciously objectifying women. I'm freaking out. I haven't had good meaningful sex in fucking months. I had, I had sex a few weeks ago, but it didn't mean anything. I didn't know this person. And to be honest, when I think back on that sex, it fucking terrifies me. And my friend was like, why does it terrify you that you had sex a couple weeks ago? And I was like, because I didn't wear a fucking franger. And he was like, what's a franger? And I was like, mate, you're smoking too much. Thank you so much.